and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for our Monuments of Power expansion review. This expansion is going to be coming out tomorrow. That's going to be October 14th. And it's going to have 40 brand new cards in it. So we're going to be splitting up this review into two parts. This is going to be part one, where we're going to be discussing the 10 new Bilgewater cards, as well as the 10 new Demacia cards. So that's what we're going to be discussing here. So Bilgewater and Demacia, and then all the other regions, including Targon and, and the other regions, they also have a combined 20 cards. And so that will be in part two. All right, this is part one, starting with Bilgewater. Um, brand new champion here with Tom Kench. This card looks really sweet. So this is four mana, two, six. Um, there we go. Yeah, four mana, two, six. Round start, create an acquired taste in hand, and it levels up whenever I've captured three plus units. When I level up, obliterate my captured enemies and release my allies. That's kind of that's something a little different. You know, we haven't really seen too much capturing. We have basically just one capture card in the format, I believe, with detain. I can't really think of any others off the top of my head. So that's just something that we don't really see too much. Um, so let's see. Let's kind of take a closer look at this card. So round start, we're we're creating an acquired taste. All right. So acquired taste isn't isn't just like a like one of the ten cards. It's going to be one of the champion cards i assume it's over here there we go related cards so acquire taste is going to be um it swallows and uh <laughs> i guess i can't remove ads uh it, it swallows an enemy unit it strikes him and then he captures it um so that's kind of that's kind of like weird wording right like how just how they have this in general but basically how this plays is that um, Tom Kench will, will kind of like, it's kind of like fighting an enemy unit with single combat. Like, so let's say you're trying to take an Eye of the Dragon that's going to be a 1-3 with Tom Kench. The Eye of the Dragon will strike your Tom Kench first, so it will do one damage to your Tom Kench. But then after that, then Tom Kench will detain it, will capture it. So that's basically like a detain but the thing that you're detaining also strikes your Tom Kench. And it's it's also where Tom Kench is the only thing they can detain. Now, of course, now of course it costs two mana instead of five like detain. It's slow speed, not fast like detain. And it's fleeting, but you get one every single round start. Um, so you're going to definitely want to be able to capture smaller things. Because if they're striking your Tom Kench, like your Tom Kench is going to be dying pretty quickly. It does start with six health out of four, so that's pretty nice. So, <clears throat> so in order to level up Tom Kench, you do have to capture three plus units. So that's not necessarily easy. Like that's going to be pretty difficult, honestly. But you can capture your own units or you can capture your enemy units. This acquired taste that you create every single round only swallows enemy units. You, you know, you don't get to use those on your own things. You can't be eating your own stuff with that. But if we are able to um, level up our Tom Kench, if we are able to capture three units, and, and we're going to talk, like, there's going to be some more cards that will help us out with this. Then whenever Tom Kench is leveled up, it gets the, you know, the plus one, plus one, like champions always do. It still creates a, one of these acquired tastes every round start, but then it also has every time it attacks, it obliterates all your captured enemies and releases my allies, just like it does whenever it levels up. So instead of, like, with Detain, you know, like, if you detain, uh, you know, a couple of things, and then they kill your thing that, that was detaining, then they get their stuff back. But that's why Tom Kench can be really valuable, is it can turn these into obliterates. So once you have a leveled up Tom Kench, it creates an acquired taste. You can cast that acquired taste immediately, swallow an enemy unit, then you attack with Tom Kench, and that enemy unit is obliterated. So it can turn into a two mana obliterate um, as an effect there. So just a really cool card. Um, it's going to take a lot to get Tom Kench going. It's very vulnerable. It's pretty, you know, pretty easy to kill Tom Kench, and you know, all their things are going to be striking your Tom Kench, and then you have to attack, which you don't really want to attack with this card, because uh, you know, then they could be able to block it. So there's there's a lot going on here um, as far as trying to keep Tom Kench alive. Um, yes, you can capture ephemeral units. I yes, I will. Maybe not with this, because then it's because the, the enemy unit strikes him. Um so maybe not, because once you once it once an 
ephemeral unit strikes, then it dies. So that's actually a pretty good question. I would think that that answer would be no, that it wouldn't be able to, you would not be able to use an acquired taste to grab an ephemeral unit because what ephemeral units, once they strike, they just die. So I, d I don't think they would, would capture it. No. Um, yeah, so I, I agree. So we're going to definitely have to constantly heal our Tom Kench. You know, giving Tom Kench like regeneration would, would definitely be really good to try to keep this this health high. And, and so pairing Tom Kench with um, regions that can do some, some healing, that's going to be critical. But then also just seeing how it deals with capturing and with, with our only capture card in the format right now being Detain, we think immediately of, okay, well, we want to pair this with Demacia. Demacia can give Tom Kench tough with a few different ways. Um, and if you can give Tom Kench tough, then, then it's going to be taking less damage each each source because it's probably going to be taking damage from a lot of sources. So each one of these sources uh, dealing less damage could definitely be really important. Um, and then also Demacia, yeah, has barrier, which could <clears throat> be really good whenever like it's getting uh, striked and stuff like that. Um, as you can see here, just just from like this site, it looks like people are pretty excited to play Tom Kench with Soraka. That's a champion that we'll be talking about later that has to deal with healing. But then also looks like people are um, talking about uh, Tom Kench with Frostbite, which Frostbite works pretty well too. Because if you can Frostbite the unit and then have and then go with the Acquire Taste, then you don't have to worry about Tom Kench taking any damage from being uh, stricken because the other unit has zero power. So that could work out pretty well too. Um, but yeah, back in Demacia, Unyielding Spirit with Tom Kench, that could be sweet. That could be sweet, especially with Hush being a little nerfed now. Um, yeah, we could have some Unyielding Spirit Tom Kench. That, could, that definitely sounds like something that'll be fun to do. All right, so let's take a look at, at some of the other cards. <laughs> All these, how do, we, how do we go back? Go back. Okay. So what kind of support does Tom Kench have in this new set? All right, so we have uh, a new landmark, the Slaughter Docks. Three mana, round start, you toss one. If you are deep, destroy me and summon a random sea monster. All right, so this one isn't you know necessarily going with Tom Kench. We'll, we'll get to some others that do. Um, but we're just going to go in order here. So what kind of deck wants to really play the Slaughter Docks? This, this landmark is a little weird. It's a three mana card, with, and it cares about deep. Right now with three mana cards that care about deep, you already have a couple of really good ones, right? Like you have Jaw Hunters, and then you also have, oh, it's the 3-2 with Lifesteal that tosses three. I can't think of the name. For some reason, the name just eludes me. Um, but yeah, so that's two really good three mana cards that you already have access to in a deep deck. So this is just going to be taking up that, that same slot as those. So it's really how many of those three-man cards do you really want to play? Um, but you are t it, it's a very slow burn of just tossing one every single turn. Uh, Jettison is one mana, burst speed, and it tosses four. Uh, so this three mana, you know, slow speed, that you have to spend unit uh, mana on, that you have to spend regular mana and not just spell mana on, and you're only tossing one every single turn, this is going to be very, very slow. Hey, what's up, Biz? I am doing great. Thank you so much for that sub. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, there you go. Awesome. Glad you've been playing some ranked recently. Yeah, Tom Kench is going to be a lot of fun. Awesome. Thank you, Biz. Um, so, so you're so with just saying those things, we're thinking, man, the Slaughter Docks. That that does not sound like a good card to be playing. However, this second sentence is really, really powerful. If you are deep, destroy me to summon a random sea monster. Sea monsters are very powerful, and they all cost, I guess, four mana is the cheapest. You know, like there's one at four, one at five, one at six, one at seven, and one at eight. Yeah. So they cost four through eight mana, and so you're going to be getting a random one of those for only three mana. So that's really powerful. So this is this is the kind of card that like rewards you for uh, being deep, uh, rather than help you get deep. You know, it's it's a very slow burn helping you get deep. Whoa! 
In honor of the new expansion, Biz is gifting out five subs. That is absolutely incredible. Thank you so much, Biz. And so, so now, Scavenger Zero, Ryler, Sodiumbrella, Moonlight, and Hamster Bump, all getting those gifted subs. All awesome, uh, great choices. All awesome viewers that are here quite a bit. That means we're gonna have some bonus stream. We're, uh, we'll have some bonus stream now with that. We made. We, I think I may do that bonus stream tomorrow once we have the new expansion and we have all the new cards. We'll play some extra bonus games with that. That sounds great. Yeah. So basically, every <clears throat> yeah, and you do have to wait till the round start, right? It's so like you're only getting the sea monsters at round start. So like, let's say you have the slaughter docks in play, and then you play a couple of jettisons and you go deep, you don't get any reward then. You have to wait until round round start. You'll still toss an additional one, and then it checks. If you are deep, you get the sea monster. So now that this landmark honestly isn't looking that great to me uh, because of that competition there in the three mana slot. Um, yeah, so the expansion drops tomorrow. Yep. It drops tomorrow. Uh, so we're, we're talking about all the new cards today. So yeah, it doesn't, not too, not super excited about this landmark. All right, let's go on to the next card. So sunk cost, eight mana. <laughs> you know, it just, this is a very aptly named card, right? It costs eight mana and it says sunk cost. That's very aptly named. And all it does is just shuffle a unit or a landmark into uh, its deck. Not a very good card, you know, at, at eight mana. Um, it's it's kind of like Vengeance, but it's slow, you know, and at slow speed, it costs eight mana. I mean, you're just dealing with one. For one more mana, you could have Ruination for nine mana, right? But we're just one mana less than Ruination. It does get rid of, like, threats like Trindamir and, you know, by shuffling them back into the deck, you know, things like that, but still. Um, and, you know, can get rid of a landmark, but still. Unless, like, landmarks are everywhere and you need it. I don't really imagine playing sunk cost. It's just too much mana. It really is. Um, yeah. So no. I, yeah. So guessing the vengeance won't hit landmarks. Guessing maybe it will. Uh, we'll have to kind of see. That's something that that I'm surprised they didn't tell us in that patch. You know, we just went over uh, patch one twelve. I'm surprised they didn't tell us anything about patch. They said that. Um, old cards are going to be updated to be able to deal with landmarks, and I'm surprised they didn't tell us any of those updates in patch 112, actually. Um, yeah, that, that is kind of out. Of, yeah, that's that's a little too much mana. All right, Wise Fry. Six mana, three, six with Overwhelm and Vulnerable. Whenever you play it, deal one to all other allies, and then grant me plus one, plus zero for each of them. And we're going to see, we're going to see that uh, theme in Bilgewater here where there's going to be a lot of self-damage cards. This card, honestly, I think would be okay if it didn't have the vulnerable. But the fact that it has the vulnerable just makes me much less, you know, like, I'd, it's pretty tough to play cards that just have vulnerable and let your opponent decide how they block. Um, this deck's, this card kind of looks very similar to Scar Mother Verena for me. Like, for me. You know, like, Scar Mother Verena has, like, whenever it takes the damage, it gets that plus three, plus zero, and it has Overwhelm. And so it even though it starts off at like three power, it can grow really big and have overwhelm. I think this is a kind of a similar type card um, where, you know, it can grow real big. Um, if you have five other units in play, which is the absolute most, then you deal one damage to all of those and you get an eight, eight overwhelm that also has vulnerable for six mana. Just not really not really thinking this is going to see play too much um a big we have seen large overwhelmed bodies like that kind of like there's the the uh sunburst the six mana sunburst card from targon that's like an eight seven overwhelm whenever you play it as long as you have all right daybreak sorry not sunburst daybreak the daybreak card that whenever you have it and it has the daybreak so that's kind of similar of course that grow that goes to be smaller right after words if you're going to be like maybe maybe this could be the top end of an aggressive deck that's trying to deal damage to all its stuff you know that maybe could be the top end but probably not there's probably going to just be better things to be doing than a wise fry i like the art i like the name um really cool card 
Like that alligator guy in the back, he's cool. Awesome card, but I'm just not sure it's going to be uh, see too much play in Constructed. Yeah, they, yep, looks like they're definitely building upon um, uh, dealing your own damage to, to your own allies. So, yeah, maybe playing uh, Bilgewater and Soraka together, which, you know, we'll go over Soraka with a lot of healing. But then in just um, dealing damage to your own things, that could be really good for like a Vladimir deck. Right, if you're trying, if this is trying to be aggressive, maybe you're trying to play this in a in a Noxus deck with Vladimir, where you do one damage to all your allies. Um, if if we're pair, if we're pairing Tom Kench with Demacia because of this is something. If we're pairing Tom Kench with Demacia because we're trying to play Detain with Demacia, Wise Fry can be in here and. You can have Rangers Resolve, so you could play Rangers Resolve first, and then play Wise Fry, and you don't actually do any damage to your other allies. But then it's going to be a really big overwhelm thing. The thing is, is like if you're playing Demacia, I think I would rather just have Genevieve Elmhart <laughs> or Scythria. You know, like I'd you know, I'd rather just have those kind of cards than a Wise Fry. Just just kind of thinking though. Uh, yes, Culling Strike. Yes, Culling Strike is going to be very very important in this metagame at least especially immediately right away day one day one everybody's gonna be trying tom kench shivana and uh, soraka and all three of them die to culling strike and they all cost more than three mana so culling strike looks to be super uh super premium very premium card to be playing day one all right anyway next card we got shakedown so Shakedown's a 1-mana burst speed deal 2 to an ally to grant 2 enemies vulnerable. To be able to play this card... Okay, let's let's say it didn't have the first part. Would you would you have... what? Would you play 1-mana burst speed grant 2 enemies vulnerable? And that, that's all it said. Probably. And it, you know, it kind of depends on the deck. Um, but that that's probably going to be played in a decent amount of stuff. You know, like, like your Bilgewater Noxus, probably not playing that. Um, but you know, different decks, you, you could play that card. Um, but it's not, it's not, uh, it doesn't just jump off the page of like, definitely, absolutely, you spend one mana to grant two enemies vulnerable. Um, because you're also just spending a card. So spending an entire card just to grant enemies vulnerable, that does, that isn't putting a body into play. You know, like, like Hired Gun is a, is a two, three that also gives you the vulnerable. Um, you know, you have like, uh, the six mana, six, five, um, the sheriff that also grants all of your enemies vulnerable. Um, you know, so you have like units that can already do the grant the enemy vulnerable. Obviously you have the, the five mana scout as well. So you have like these, these uh, units, like you're, you're spending mana and you're getting bodies that affect the battlefield. And you're also giving them vulnerable. This doesn't affect the, the battlefield. All it does is grant two enemies vulnerable and you're spending an entire card to do that. So that's that's you know so that's already going to be kind of down a card there. That's going to be a little rough. So to be able to play this, you need a couple of things. You either need that vulnerable to be incredibly valuable, or you also need the teal the sorry the deal to to an ally to be valuable as well. So you need you need a combination there. So thinking of something where that could be the case, maybe you're playing the undying. Like in an undying deck, you can deal two to your undying, and you can grant two enemies vulnerable. Um, so like maybe especially like if it's like your opponent's turn, your undying is not going to die and it's a 2-2, you can like kill it, you can give them vulnerable, now your next turn, now your undying can go ch start challenging them, um, you know, something like that. Like that could be really nice, um, thinking of just a scenario there where you would want the shakedown. Um, so stuff like that. So you're going to need those to be um, important. Again, yeah, Scar Mother Verena. Where you're gonna to want to deal damage to your own thing, um, you know that kind of stuff. Yeah, so we'll have to kind of see as we go through, um, see if they're you know how valuable dealing two to your own ally will be. All right, next we have Lounging Lizard. It's just another awesome card. All these cards, these cards just look really cool. Like Bilgewater has like just like the coolest like mechanics and flavor and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, so three mana, three five elusive. That is just such a huge body. Like that's just an incredible card. 
That's amazing. But round star deal two to me. Okay, now now we see the problem, <laughs> right? Because it's just going to be dying fairly quickly. Um, but if you can still play the lounging lizard and uh, attack, hit him for three, you know, even it's just like three nexus damage when you're talking about a, a region that's aggressive at like Bilgewater, that can be really important. Like that's, you know, basically like Decimate or Noxion Fervor, you know, I guess Noxion Fervor a little better of like three mana deal three damage. Um, but then, you know, just going up to the nexus kind of like, like a Decimate. Uh, not a bad card. So you can... So you, you play it on your attack turn, you attack. Round start on their turn, it takes two damage, now it's a 3-3. Three, three. It can block, but you probably don't want it to block. So it's a 3-3, three, three. then it goes back to your turn. It's going to take another two damage, now it's a 3-1, you can hit him again with it. Um, so like if they if they do not use any kind of spell to, to deal with it, and if they don't have an elusive blocker, it's going to be able to hit twice and deal uh, three damage twice. Now there's a lot of ways to heal it. Also, you can you can try to keep healing your lounging lizard. You you know you can pair it with like uh, Targon with all the healing, and we'll see with with Soraka with different healing. You can pair it with, um, but then when you're pairing it with with that, like that's going to be a defensive region, and then you're using an offensive card and a de in a defensive deck, and do those really mesh? Maybe not. Um, if we want to keep it um, just uh, being an offensive deck. This could work really well with Freljord. If you think about like your Twisted Fate decks, like with Twisted Fate, Fizz, and in Freljord where you have uh, um, the 2-3 that's going to be growing all of your stuff. Man, why am I not thinking the name of that card? But if you're going to be trying to use pumps, pump spells and everything, that could really help out Lounging Lizard. Could help it stay alive because even though it'll take some damage when you use pump spells, it will heal it again. So you'll be able to use like your Fury of the Norths and things like that. Um, and uh, you know, it could be a really big, good elusive threat. Basically, I think the Lounging Lizard's probably better than <sighs> there's just so many card names. I wish I was better at, at remembering these card names, but I think if we're looking at like that kind of deck, um, uh, like the Freljord Bilgewater. Um, buffing up your stuff. It's probably better than the, the current 2-3 elusive, the uh, Golden Narwhal. I think I'd rather play Lounging Lig Lizard than Golden Narwhal in that kind of deck. All right, uh, Bayou Brunch. Our next card, three mana, slow. An ally captures another ally and gains the captured ally stats. All right, we're back to capturing. That's what Tom Kench wants to do. And remember, Tom Kench can capture... Um, enemies and allies, and whenever Tom Kench levels up, you will release the allies that you capture. So you can you can buy you brunch, um, eat one of your own allies for brunch, um, and, so, and then it'll gain the stats. So you know maybe you're eating like a, a three five, right? So then then Tom Kench gets plus three plus five for the the power and health if it eats a three five, just to use as an example. And then whenever Tom Kench levels up you'll still be able to release them and still uh, go back to the battlefield. Um, so that could really help out with things with summon abilities, right? Like, let's say you have Avros and Hearthguard. You know, you're playing it with Frel Yord with Frostbite. You buy you brunch your Avros and Hearthguard. You give Tom Kench plus five, plus five, which is just massive, of course. And then Tom Kench levels up. Like, maybe it's the third unit. And then so that's it's captured three units. Now it levels up. Now you spit your Avros and Hearthguard back out. And you get the Avros and Hearthguard ability again. Um, so then all of your units in, in your deck will have the plus two, plus two. Um, so that's that's pretty awesome there. Um, yes, Tom Kench is good with Ash and just Frostbite in general because of the... Yeah, like, yeah, it's definitely good with, with Frostbite. Yeah, so there we go. So that's so that's pretty awesome. So Because th you are capturing an ally with Bayou Brunch. So you're, those things are not doing damage to Tom Kench. Um, it's only like with the acquired taste. Whenever you do that with enemies, those will do damage to Tom Kench. And so, yeah, having those frostbitten definitely work, works out well. Um, Tom Kench would not lose the stats. No, no. Whenever whenever they're released, Tom Kench just keeps those stats permanently with Bayou Brunch. Keeps keeps them permanently. And then whenever whenever it releases allies, it just puts them back into play. So Tom, you know, so if like that happens, Tom Kench will still have the plus five plus five, and you'll still ha get your Avaros and Hearthguard. Um, so pretty awesome. But the, the reason why it's like that is because it's still, 
you have to capture three units and you have to capture your own allies. It's it's difficult to pull off, but if you can pull it off, you get a pretty big payout. So that's pretty cool. All right, we got Fortune Cr Croker. Let's go down a little bit here. Uh, two mana, two, three. That's a good body. You know, that's War Chef's body. You know, it's two threes are good. Um, and whenever we... Uh, whenever it has, has a play ability, so not a summon if it would come back, so a play ability, um, deal one to me and an ally and then draw a card. Pretty awesome. So, you know, like whenever you play this, it'll basically turn into a 2-2. Two -two. But then you also have to do one to another ally. And as long as you have another ally they're able to deal one damage to, you get to draw a card. <clears throat> so, you know, it'll be replacing itself. So, um you know, kind of similar to your two mana cards that can re replace themselves, like Averroes and Sentry, right? Uh, that kind of stuff. Um, if you're playing, this is a lot better of a defensive card. So this is the kind of card that you'd really want with a Soraka deck, like where you're going to be healing your own stuff if you're going to be playing defense. Um, even like a, even a Tom Kench deck that's playing some defense, this would be pretty good. You know, maybe you're going with your Demacia and your Tough. Again, keep, keep that card draw going because obviously card draw is just you know, one of the most important things in a card game. The more cards you have, the better your chances of winning for sure. So this is going to be a, a very good filler card. This is going to definitely be something that will be in uh, multiple decks. Also just great with like your Vladimir decks, even if you're not playing Tom Kench or Soraka, you know, you're playing like a, a Vladimir. Bilgewater, Noxus, Vladimir, uh, you know, very good there. Even in like a, a Swain deck, you know, that's still two damage they are dealing for your Swain deck. So you, you get it, like a Swain deck would get an early blocker, get two damage towards leveling up Swain. You know, still good like that. So just a, a good card to have. All right, up next we got Boxtopus. We have a two mana, three, four challenger. Play it, deal three damage to me. So basically we have a three, one challenger for two, which that's a that's still a good card. Um, You know, that's, yeah, that's... A good card you know that can deal with a lot of things being a three damage challenger uh you know you're talking about taking down some champions there's a lot of like three three champions that it can deal with um you know it only cost two mana so it's cheaper than than jaw hunters now with it but it's just it's just strictly better than just being a three one besides them being able to ravenous flock it besides that <laughs> because you can heal it and get it back to having a lot more health that play deal three damage to me. That's again, that's three damage towards a Swain level up. That's also immediately goes towards leveling up a Vladimir. Um, a lot of little things that can do also, but that's just a, a good two mana card. Bilgewater didn't have like the best two mana cards. It, it had like some some okay options at two mana. You know, like you have like Hired Gun, you have Dreadway Deckhand, and you have um, the Nab, the two one, the Nabs. You have you have those black market merchant so you have like some some decent options but nothing that's like auto you always play this card and so this kind of just gives it two more things you know between boxtopus and this fortune croaker just more options so bilgewater can really go a lot of different ways it's just a region that has a lot of good options um and especially when, at two mana when you when you have all those good options you can you can play a lot of different bilgewater decks so expect even more bilgewater decks and a, a wider variety of bilgewater decks moving forward hey sleep death hello all right up next uh we have crusty codger a one mana two four whenever you play it deal two to me so again this can be like a one mana two two which that's that's a really good card, but it's just a better one mana two two because of your ability to heal this with just a, you know a super wide variety of cards that heal, um, even pump spells how they heal. This is just even better. What really makes Cru Krusty Codger exciting is that this is a play ability, not a summon ability. So if you have your Krusty Codger die and then come back, it's coming back as a two four. Um, and same thing with the Boxtopus. These are both play abilities. They're not summon. So like maybe if you have Bayou Brunch with these and you eat them with your Tom Kench and then your Tom Kench levels up and it releases your allies, these will be released and this is going to be a 3-4 challenger. This is going to be a 2-4. They These only happen whenever you play it with the deal damage to it. So besides the, the synergies that we already talked about with the dealing damage, that can have synergies with cards that summon. Um, you know, maybe you, you're playing this with Shadow Isles and you have, 
Um, the four mana three three that kills a unit and then resummons it. Um, man, I am just missing card names today. But maybe you're playing that card, and then that resummons these, and then they turn into three four and a two four respectively. However, Krusty Codger, the thing that I was kind of saving for last, is what what really makes this stand apart. Is there are a lot of cards, especially in Bilgewater, that give you random one cost units. And this is going to be the prize now. This is going to be the absolute best one cost unit to hit with those. So we're talking cards like Petty Officer. So Petty Officer, you bring a one cost unit al along. This will be a 2-4. It won't have that play. So like you, you so now Petty Officer can be a 3-1 and a 2-4 for three mana. That is awesome. Um, what I really excited about this card is with the is with the scout one at four mana. Um, uh, what's the the scout card? Chronicler of Ruin was the other one that I was talking about with the yeah with the, the three three. Um, so your four mana scout that's a two four that you also play and you get an additional one cost unit. If that one cost unit is Krusty Codger, which can happen sometimes it will also be a 2-4 with Scout. So you're gonna get two bodies that are both gonna be 2-4s with Scout uh, whenever you play that card that I cannot remember the name. <laughs> oh man, there's just too many cards. I need to be better with these names. Uh, I'm getting old, getting old. Islander. Island Navigator, there we go, Island Navigator. That's it, all right, Island Navigator, figured it out. So yeah, when you have Island Navigator, you know how like the island navigator 2-4 is already like difficult to kill like in combat like with it being like an attacker well imagine if you have like a, an additional 2-4 with scout that's so that's a pretty big upgrade to island navigator having both of those but you know you also have your other one one uh random one cost spells that you don't see very much like your jailbreak um that's one or the there's one that's like a three mana you get two random one drops maybe those kind of cards are even better uh with crusty codger and then whenever you, you start combining this with like Jagged Taskmaster, that, you know, this could be like a 3-4 a with your Jagged Taskmaster or your Professor Von Yip, where you could have like one mana, 4-6. You know, you, you can just do some cool stuff with Krusty Codger and summon uh, with the random one drops. All right, so yeah, this is, a, this is a big time card, is what I'm saying. And not necessarily for just itself, but this, this improves a lot of other cards with getting the random one drops. All right, we got uh, so that's that's the new updates with Demasi or sorry with Bilgewater. We got a new champion, Tom Kench, looking really really cool. All right, Demacia. Demacia's got a bunch of dragons, and you can kind of tell that just from the art of these cards. All right, we have a new champion, Shivana, and this Shivana is a four mana three four, and it's a dragon, so that's important there. So Shivana has the dragon subtype for all of the cards that deal with dragons. Attack, give me plus one, plus one this round. So whenever it attacks, it's just a four, five. So that four mana, four, five attacking, that's pretty good. That's, you know, bull Elnuk, right? Like that's hard to kill. But then also it levels up whenever I've seen dragon allies deal 12 plus damage. All right, so Shivana counts towards the dragon allies. So if, if you play Shivana attack, it deals four, boom. That's already four damage that you've dealt. Um, now that... That's not just uh, combat damage, so that that includes cards like Concerted Strike, can just you know have two Dragon Strike and basically level up Shivana immediately. You also have cards like Single Combat doing the striking as well, and this brand new Single Combat, which is Strafing Strike, you have this one as well, um, which we'll just kind of talk about this one right here. So Strafing Strike, Strafing Strike is a three mana fast. An ally and an enemy strike each other. So that's just like uh, single combat. But now single combat costs three mana, but then it has a little additional bonus. If the ally is a dragon, you then heal it too after they strike each other. So I think just overall, probably a little worse than single combat because it costs three instead of two, but it has that nice little bonus for the dragons. Um, I'm not sure if you're really playing that over single combat, probably not, but uh, we're gonna see some more about that card. So. So Shivana levels up once you do the 12 plus damage. So what happens whenever Shivana levels up? You get Dragon Shivana, 
and uh, Dragon Shivana is now going to be a 4-5, and now Dragon Shivana gains Fury. Um, so the re regular Shivana doesn't have Fury. And then whenever it attacks, you give it plus 2, plus 2 this round. And, um, you know, so then, so for 4 mana, with this thing leveled up, it's getting incredibly big. So it gets plus two, plus two this round, and then you also create a fleeting strafing strike in hand. So that strafing strike, that's the card we were just talking about with that single combat. You get to create a fleeting one in hand whenever your leveled up Shivana attacks. Pretty awesome champion. And I'm expecting this champion to do a whole lot. I'm expecting this, this card to be very good um, because it's just really efficient. This is This champion kind of reminds me of Trundle from last set. Trundle wasn't like necessarily the card that a lot of people were talking about right away, but it's probably the best champion from the set because it's just raw stats and ability in combat, both attacking and blocking are so good. And that's kind of Shivana. Now, Shivana is better at attacking than blocking, of course, with getting the additional buff. But it's not difficult to level up Shivana. Like, okay, regular Shivana is still pretty strong at just four mana, four, five, whenever it's attacking. Like that's, that's perfectly fine. And then it's not that difficult to level up Shivana, just like it's like very, very easy to level up Trundle. But this one's a little hard. Like Trundle's like the easiest thing to level up, but this one's not that difficult to level up either. And once it's leveled up, um, this is really, really strong. Being able to attack, be very big attacking, have Fury, and then also creating uh, you know, single combats, basically in hand that can be removal for opposing champions and things like that. So yeah, I think I think this is the best champion out of the three, as well. Um, uh, the the patch the patch notes are up. Yes, here is a link to the patch notes. If if you did not see those yet, Z Crush. I do think this is probably the best champion out of the three, and uh, you know it's going to really care about dragons though. But you, you do have to kind of build around this. You don't get to, you, you're probably not throwing Shivana just everywhere. You do need to kind of build around it with the dragons a little bit. You know, you're going to have to have a little bit of a, a dragon package whenever you're playing Shivana. Like, where Trundle, you can just play Trundle anywhere. So it's, you know, it's. I'm not saying this is good as Trundle. I'm just saying kind of comparatively uh, with Trundle with the other champions, Shivana with these two champions. I feel like Shivana is just like the one that just has really high rate um, with power and health and going to be a strong card. The champion spell for Shivana is Confront, where you grant an ally challenger and then shuffle a Shivana into your deck. Um, let's just head on over to that card. So you get to grant an ally challenger. So that's going to be any any ally. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a dragon, and it's grant, so it's permanent. So it's going to be permanent challenger. Overall, that's probably not a card you're putting into decks. Like there's, there is the three mana card in Demacia right now that's burst that gives all of your cards uh, challenger for one turn. And I think I like that card more than this. I think that's gonna be overall a more impactful card, being able to give everything, all of your stuff challenger. However, I think this could be work really well with the Undying, how you grant the Undying challenger and then it can keep on challenging, right? Like it will die, come back. Because as far as as far as I know, it would come back and have challenger some more, I think. Um, but that could be a really cool combo with that. Um, as a champion spell, that's an effective champion spell, right? Because that that is definitely a, a good champion spell. You can give Shivana challenger and uh, have Shivana challenge something small, so you don't have to worry about Shivana dying in combat. Shivana can strike and deal some more damage to get closer to the level up. That's a good champion spell. Maybe not necessarily a, a spell you're playing immediately on its own, but definitely a good champion spell. Oh no! Okay, Undying does lose the ability when you die when it dies. Okay, well then, yeah, you're definitely not playing that over the other version then. If it loses it when it dies. So what you get is, um, you know, that summoned grant uh, other dragon allies everywhere plus two plus two. That is awesome. Think about the celestial card that costs seven mana and gives all of your allies plus two plus two. Think of how powerful that card is. That card is incredibly powerful. This is two extra mana. You get a nine. You know, you get that for your dragon allies. You get that ability. Plus, you also get a nine six with fury. 
This is also a summon ability. So if you can if you can do some crazy stuff with this, if you can like, you know, Chronicler of Ruin this thing and put it back into play, you get another bonus here. Um, unfortunately, it is other Dragon Ally, so it doesn't help itself. But if you can do that, if you, maybe you want to play like Dragons with Harrowing, and you like Harrowing, and you put in multiple of these Infernos, and they're just going to be triggering for your plus two, plus twos. Um, you know, what, whatever ways you can cheat this thing into play and replay it and that kind of stuff, you can miss call, bring it back. I don't know, whatever ways you want to, to uh, do this whole summon thing, you can uh, keep getting those plus two, plus twos. Hey, thank you so much, Adam. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thanks for that resub. Um, so yeah, not sure not sure how we're going to be uh, cheating at this nine drop into play and replaying it and stuff, but you can get some awesome abilities with this. Uh, let's see. Um, Tom Kench. What if we use a Bayou Brunch and we capture our Infernal under a Tom Kench, give it plus nine, plus six. That sounds awesome. And then also <laughs> we level up our Tom Kench. We release the allies. So we put the Infernal back into play and now we get an additional plus two, plus two for him. Yeah, I mean, that sounds awesome. Cause then the second time you play the Infernal, it will be another dragon ally, right? So like the second time it will be an 11-8, right? Like if you if you Chronicler of Ruin this card and bring it back, it should be an 11-8, I would think. So it'd be another, it'd be a different dragon ally. And then it gives all the other ones plus two, plus two again. Um, so I don't know. I'm just, just trying to spitball some crazy things we can do with this. It looks pretty cool. Um, yeah, let's make some cool dragon decks. All right, what else we got? We got six mana. For Dragon Guard Lookout, when I'm summoned, if you behold a dragon, then you rally. So obviously the, the main card to kind of compare this to is Citrus Courier. Citrus Courier is a 4-5, Plunder, Rally, also heal all your stuff 3. Probably just with those two things, Citrus Courier is probably a better card, because especially how it's the 4-5 and then, you know, it, it does the healing as well. But with that being said... I could see this card seeing a lot more play than Citrus Courier. The reason why is because this is in a region and also in an archetype that cares much, much more about rallying than your normal Bilgewater deck. Your normal Bilgewater deck is going to be playing a lot of spells that are doing damage and a lot of smaller units. That's what Bilgewater has, a lot of smaller units. And therefore rallying with smaller units is not always as valuable. But Demacia is playing very big units and units that are great in combat, right? Like Demacia wants to be in combat all the time. Like that's that's what this region is all about. And so being able to rally in this region is going to be very valuable. And especially with dragons. And that's not a difficult... If you're building a deck around this, that's not a very difficult clause. So this is basically always going to be a rally. Um, you know, beholding a dragon is not a difficult clause to achieve. Um... And so, yeah, being able to rally in this region, when you have your cards like Shivana, that really wants to have extra attack steps. And so this is being able to play a Relentless Pursuit that's also a body and also does a whole lot more. So I like this card. I think this card's pretty strong. I think that this can be another uh, another good option for Demacia at 6 mana. De obviously, De Demacia at 6 mana has great options already with Genevieve, Elmhart, and Cythria the Bold. This is going to have some competition there. But if you're playing a dragon deck, all these dragons, especially like, you know, Demacia Targon and think about all the Targon dragons, how they all have fury um, and they're all very big with fury. So they, you know, attacking with them multiple times, um, definitely beneficial. So good card here. All right, we've talked about these other two. All right, and now we get like the, the good um, enablers, I guess you, you can kind of say the... The stop gaps, the things at two mana. All right, Stony Suppressor. So two mana, one three, all spells cost one more. So that's your spells, that's your opponent's spells. Everything that's a spell costs one more. That's even um, free spells like Jack the Winner creating a Sleep with the Fishes. That's now going to cost one mana instead of costing zero. So this is a pretty decent card. Like, this is going to be a good card. Now, the thing is, is can to be able to play Stony Suppressor, you definitely need the 1-3 body to do something, right? Like, you need, 
you need this to be more than just two mana landmark all spells cost one more right like you need you need that one three body to matter it can't just be like a landmark sitting there doing nothing um so that's gonna be the most important thing so probably so playing stony suppressor you probably want to be playing it in like a bannerman deck where a bannerman can you know buff this up a little bit um you know, make it even like a two four and then you know like try to just curve out with a whole bunch of units and bannerman and that kind of stuff that's probably what the kind of deck you want to be playing this game already has like pretty expensive spells in general. A lot of spells, whenever you play them, they're taking up your turn or like most of your turn. A lot of spells cost like five mana, seven mana, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so one additional mana on those kind of cards isn't necessarily backbreaking. Um, I think this this also helps out a card like single combat. Single combat is cheap for its its for its effect you know like two mana is really not that much for single combat so making single combat cost three mana it's still definitely good enough as a three mana spell um concerned strike still probably good enough as a six mana spell so you know like it it's in a good re you know it's definitely in a good region and demacia can curve out and have so many good cards this is it's in a great region for demacia uh, this is a card we'll build around well we're definitely going to build some uh stony demacia stony decks um yeah, this, this really hurts. Yeah, this hits Lee Sin real hard. Yes. Yep. Decks that need to cast a lot of spells like Lee Sin, your Eye of the Dragon decks, your Lee Sin decks, definitely hits them hard. Hits like even like Targon. Targon's like, you know, playing a decent amount of spells in there and like their Pill Cascades and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, this makes like your Bastion cost five mana now. <laughs> Bastion now costs four. This would make it cost five. That can hurt those kind of decks for sure. Uh, this hurts Bilgewater quite a bit. Bilgewater is, you know, playing like your Make It Rains. Like even your Bilgewater Noxus. Like they're playing like some good cheap spells. Um, this this can hurt them. Yeah, this hurts Make It Rain. Uh, yeah, so the so basically, yes, exactly. This this I agree. This kind of could take could play this in a Bannerman deck, take up the War Chef's slot, play your Stony Suppressor. Uh, try to annoy your opponent while you are curving out. And I think that can be pretty effective. All right, uh, we got Stalking Broodmother, another new dragon. It costs seven mana. It's a 6-6 six, six with Fury and Scout. That's pretty cool. So we already have, we have a 5-5 five, five Scout with the big moose. And that card doesn't see that much play, but you know, you get that sometimes off your remembrance and things like that, but it's, it's pretty good. But the, the problem is, you know, like, I don't know, you attack in, it's a five, five, they block with their three, three, two, and then you try to attack in again, then they block with their two, two and it's, and it's gone. Having fury with multiple attacks is pretty awesome because it makes, it makes it really difficult to just block twice and kill this brood mother because it's basically a seven, seven, right? Like you attack the first time they got to block it you know they're not taking six and so they block it with something small and then it grows with that fury and so then you attack again and now they got to block it again and so you know it's it's essentially a seven seven as far as trying to double block it the turn that you play it and get to attack twice this is a good scout this is a good card you can this could this is definitely playable in dragon decks and also as like a top end card also playable in non-dragon decks in scout decks um you know, kind of like the Siren being a 3-7 Scout, how that's, like, hard to kill. This is a 6-6 six, six with Fury and Scout. This could be a nice top end for Scout decks. I think this is an underrated card. Cost 7. I know it's difficult to play, but this one, probably people just glance over where this is playable. 7 mana is still playable. We see, like, a lot of 8, eight mana cards that are played that are, you know, really impactful. If you compare this... <clears throat> you know, maybe this makes like, like Ionia plus Demacia, like one, one turn kill deck makes that kind of deck even better where you have like the five, five moose and this, and then you pair those with cards like Fey Guide that can give elusive. And also of course, ghost, just the one mana spell granting elusive. You have this with elusive or going the other way, Demacia plus Noxus and give those overwhelm. You could have, you know, both might to might to give those two cards overwhelm. That how they strike twice, or also um, Kato the arm, which would only give them overwhelm once. But you know, you could have Kato. 
Yeah, I mean, this is a decent card. All right, Sharp Sight. Two mana, Burst. Give an ally, plus two, plus two, and I can block units with Elusive this round. So not too surprised that this, this shows up. Um, you know, finally we have a way for non-elusives to be able to block elusives. Uh, so if elusives are going to be pretty important, then this, this is going to make this more playable. Now, right now, they have gone through and nerfed every elusive besides Zapped Brafin that just came out. But, like, every, every elusive has been nerfed. Like, they have just really nerfed elusives so much. Um... I don't know. People just don't like elusives too much. And so they've really nerfed elusive. So like elusive decks aren't really a thing. And so that second clause isn't as necessary as it would have been a few months ago, uh, for example. But um, two mana gives something plus two plus two this round. That's just fine. Are we playing this over like Rangers Resolve or th those kind of things? Maybe I could see that. I could see the seeing play, just that plus two, plus two. Like, that's a pretty good little little buff. And then, you know, every once in a while, you'll pick off an elusive and be happy about it. So, you know, playable. It's it's going to be right there with your, your Rangers Resolve type cards of, like, you know, do we play this or do we not play this? Or, you know, like, you know, Demacia has a, a good amount of cheap uh, spells um, like those. This could, this could definitely make the cut in them. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's yeah, it's basically a transfusion. That's true. It's like a better transfusion because you don't have to do the one damage. That is true, and transfusion's really good. And so, yeah, this is probably going to be this is actually probably going to be pretty good then. Yeah, that's a good call. It's like transfusion. That's true. Plus two, plus two is a big difference over than over just plus one, plus one. Okay, never. Mind. Yeah, y'all are y'all are selling me. This is going to be this is going to be even better than I was saying, because yeah, I love transfusion, and then. This is just better transfusion. Yeah, this card's great. Never mind. All right, never mind. I'm in it. We're going to be playing a whole bunch of this card. All right, next up, two mana, Egghead Researcher. It's a 1-3. When I'm summoned, create a random dragon follower in hand. I'm a big fan of this card. I know I don't like two mana 1-3s, as I've talked about with War Chefs. I really don't like that. But this card replaces itself. So it's a 1-3 that also creates that dragon follower for you. So it's not you're not spending an entire card on this because it, it just replaces itself in hand immediately. This just adds on to another 2-drop that, that draws a card. Uh, like this a whole bunch. Um, this is going to be good in dragon decks, but then also just good in def defensive decks. Like, you know, like if you're playing like a, a Lux deck that's trying to play a later game, I'll just use an example, just something that... You, you just want like a, a roadblock on turn two, you can play this, get a random dragon follower to have as a top end card immediately. This is the kind of card that allows you to have, you can play a late game deck where you're focused on the late game, but you still play early stuff because you can just play like three of these and you know that you're going to have some dragons at the top end. You don't know what dragons you're going to have. Sometimes you'll have better dragons than others, but you know you're going to be like slowing down your opponent's um, aggro deck while you are um, still building towards your late game and you still uh, don't sacrifice your late game. So, good card. Then finally, Dragon Lieutenant. Two mana, three, two. When I'm summoned, if you behold a dragon, grant me challenger. Very, very good card for a dragon deck. Even just a regular kind of Demacia deck. Um... It's not too difficult to behold a dragon to grant me challenger. Let's say you don't. Let's say you don't have a dragon. Well, you know what? You get a two mana three two. And a two mana three two is really playable. Like there, there's nothing wrong with playing a two mana three two um, at all. It's not ideal. You know, like you want your two mana three two to have some upside because there is a ton of two mana three twos just in uh, Legends of Runeterra in general that mostly all have upside. And so you want it to have some upside. But it does, you know, like whenever you do behold that dragon, it will have the challenger. It can take down champions. Um, it's it's a card that's going to be just fine to play on turn two, but not exciting, but just fine to play on turn two. But then on turn eight, it's going to be great because you'll be able to have it as a two mana challenger to go along with your other dragons, have your, dra you know, take away like the thing that can profitably block the dragon, um, you know, and that kind of stuff. So it's 
that's that's what you really want you want like a two drop that's that's not embarrassing on turn two and trades with all the other twos but then come to turn eight whenever you draw it in the late game it's still awesome so big fan of dragon guard lieutenant um you can play it in a dragon deck you could probably play it in a demacia deck where your only dragon is um the the five mana dragon that's currently available right now with the the four five with challenger you could probably even play it with just that one dragon in your deck honestly you could probably still play this in in like a two drop slot of just like a you know like a fiora shen deck like this could probably just go in regular fiora shen play that one five mana dragon play this to replace war chefs now in your two mana slot and it's probably just fine and then, you know, obviously if you start playing like Shivana that has dragon also, so you can play that five-man dragon, your Shivana. If you're playing in a dragon deck, you know, it's just going to get better. But that's probably still just fine. All right, so there we go. So there's there's our part one. That's all the new Bilgewater and Demacia. These are the two regions that uh, Monuments of Power have focused on. Um, and they, they're the two regions that get the most cards. Um, part two is coming up. We're going to be talking about uh, these new cards here with Freljord, Ionia, Noxus, P and Z, they all each get two cards. Oh, and Shadow Owls. All five of those regions all each get two new cards. And then at Targon will get 10 cards as well. So that's part 10 or part two. We'll talk about those 20 cards up next. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there and leave those comments. Let me know what you think about those, those uh, cards that I just said. But also let me know what kind of decks do you want to see uh, coming up here in the next week. Give me those deck ideas. I, you know, I can build decks. I'm very good at that. So if, you know, what do you want to see? Shivana with what? You know, Tom Kench with what? You know, like what kind of decks do you want to see on stream? What are you excited about? Uh, give me those ideas and I will make them happen. All right. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.